next test is the scratch test. I have a glass screen protector with a Mohs hardness between seven and eight. The theory behind this test is that diamond is the hardest natural substance, has a Mohs hardness of 10. So if it can scratch glass, it will pass as a diamond. So we'll go ahead and test out each one of these. So we'll test out A. So we'll just go in order. So A, B, C, D. So A definitely scratches without any difficulty. Okay. Some of these smaller stones I might need to adjust in order to hold them correctly. So B. The okay, brightness might be too high. There we go. It's quite difficult with smaller stones. That's another issue with this. That if you can't get a good grip on the stone or get it to hit there. So it's definitely not scratching it though. Uh, the screen protector did crack, but I don't think that's an issue because all we're testing to see is whether it will scratch. I'm getting the very bottom point of the stone right on the glass, scratching with a good amount of pressure. And we'll see if it makes any grooves at all. So after you do the test, so with a stone like A, it is very obvious that it passed. But with B, you need to wipe off the area to make sure there aren't any streaks or little bits of dust. And then you need to examine the area. And it looks like B completely failed to leave any scratches. Whereas with A, we can see that it left deep scratches. Okay, so B, no scratches. A, left scratches. Based on the test alone, B would be a simulant and A would be either a lab grown or natural diamond. Testing out C. And I'll do another test where I test out moissanite and other very specific simulants and go into detail about that. So C passes, passes a scratch test as well. You can see deep scratches in there. Okay. Scratches from C right there. Okay. D is going to be quite tricky because it is a very small stone. I'm going to have to grab it with tweezers and be very, very careful. If it's hard enough, it should scratch without applying a ton of pressure. It's a natural diamond. Or a harder diamond simulant. I need to grab it right. This is a difficulty you'll face as well with this test. Okay, I need to make sure. So right now it's the tweezers that are making contact. Extremely carefully what I'm doing here. A small stone. Should be able to scratch it at any edge. You don't really need the point to hit it. So D fails the test, or at least is too small to be tested. I don't think I can get it to make contact properly. But for for the purposes of our experiment, and again, when you do these experiments at home, you will be performing them in less than perfect conditions. You won't exactly have a laboratory environment where you can do all the controls and everything. So for the purposes of this test, D fails. Okay. okay, now we'll test out E. This definitely works a lot better with larger stones that you can get a good grip on in your hand. That's the big con of this is if your stone is too small, you won't really be able to make good contact. So try it out with E. Oops. You have to be careful not to confuse the cracks with the scratches. And we'll go again. And E leaves scratches as well. So E passes the scratch test. Finally, we'll test out F. Okay, once again, take the stone, take a point of the stone and scratch in. And F passes with flying colors as well. Leaves deep, deep scratches. Should be able to hear the sound and see a visible scratch and wipe away the scratch and if the scratch doesn't wipe away and it passes the scratch test okay if you want to get more refined with it you can buy um mo's uh calibrated mo's test kits that have tips that are one to th through ten mo's hardness and what that will do is allow you to test exactly the hardness and maybe identify the specific simulant or alternatively maybe it might be a colorless sapphire or a colorless spinel and that would help you in identifying that. But again, these tests are meant to be do, meant to be things that you can do at home 
for under 20 or 30 dollars those kits usually cost uh, at least 100. that was a scratch test uh, pros of the scratch test it can be done fairly easily all you need is a piece of glass uh, cons many simulants are above seven and eight on the hardness scale that's the uh, hardness of most glass seven and eight in in that range especially you know uh, hardened pieces of glass or screen protectors uh, you can buy special testing glass that might be harder uh, you can buy sapphire crystal that'll that'll be a lot more accurate that'll have a most hardness of nine uh, if you have an old watch face lying around uh, and you can and you know for a fact that that is a sapphire crystal watch face you can use that and that will help you determine if it is harder than nine or harder which will narrow it down to a very few limited number of diamond simulants and sapphire and of course natural lab grown diamond uh, biggest cons doesn't really work on small stones i couldn't really get a good enough grip to confidently and conclusively test the b and d they were just way too small so i wouldn't be able to make any conclusions from that uh, another con is that again um, many simulants and uh, other gemstones can easily pass this a hardness test uh, you can overcome that by buying most specific testing kits. I definitely think it's a better test than the readability test. The readability test is nearly impossible on smaller stones and impo nearly impossible on colored stones and can even result in false negatives where you think you can read a bit through a diamond, but it is still a natural diamond. So not a great test overall, but you know, good for getting rid of things that are definitely fakes. Most of these tests will not help you determine for sure if this is a diamond but it will help you determine if it is worth testing further, if it is worth investing in better testing, and um, to weed out fakes. That's the main point of these tests, is not how to tell if diamond is real. That's why the title says how to tell if diamond is fake, because these will help you weed out diamond simulants.